Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Writer's Block, and today we are reviewing Dead Life 2. I know what the people are probably saying. Oh my god, Aaron, Dead Life 2 came out like in May, and it's like almost September now, or actually maybe might be September now. I don't know when this video is coming out. Like, what took you so long? I get it. I get it, right? I knew it came out in May. Listen to it when it dropped, but I've been busy, and the people are probably asking, what have you been doing? Been stacking cash, been touching grass, and been hitting ass. I mean, that's really what it's about, and I get it. Like, subscribers of the ball pit know what that lifestyle is like, you know what I'm saying, because they're subscribers, but the people that aren't subscribed, they don't get it. They don't understand. They can't comprehend why those activities would make me late <laughs> getting this video out. And it's, it's okay. I understand that not everybody's lifestyle is like that. But if you want it to be, subscribe. <laughs> All right. Shameless plug out of the way. Jokes out of the way. We're here to review Dead Life 2. If you have not listened to the album yet yourself, please go do that because you're not going to get a great listening experience. From this video because i'm not going to play that many clips of the song i'm mostly just going to talk about my thoughts on it so go listen to it before you listen to the review obviously go support kez this album from dead boy kez is it's one of kez's more violent albums you kind of get a little mix up when it comes with kez you got the the really really violent <laughs> aggressive loud stuff and then you have the more melodic sadder kind of stuff in vein of like a um uh, what is that heart melt summer um uh, what's the other what's the one that just came out i see dead people stuff like that so you get you get these two you get the yin and yang when it comes to kez right you got these two sides that you get kind of equal amounts of music from and this is the latest installment in the violent section of of that but this uh album you know it's called dead life 2 a lot of the songs are actually like sequels to songs from um an album kez released ages ago called dead by default which i actually i still enjoy that album and i enjoyed it when it came out so um without further ado we're gonna head over to our boys in the lab to go for a song by song analysis. Aaron, take it away. Thanks, Aaron. So, getting together with the first song, which is Purgatory's Most Wanted 2, which, if you don't know, is actually a sequel, or I guess, yeah, it's because the second one is a sequel to Purgatory's Most Wanted off of Dead by Default. And this song actually starts with Kez reciting a news report. <laughs> That was part. Of, that was the end of the original song. So the end of the original song is the beginning of the second song. It's obviously not the same voice because Kez is reciting it this time, but you have that sort of continuation. I put that the the hook slash chorus is. I'm I'm looking at my notes over here. If you look over here, my, the hook chorus is crazy. Um, and one lyric that I pulled from that that I apparently liked a lot is so much blue they think I'm cripping about my wallet smoking on his brother pack i swear this blunt is haunted that's that's crazy smoking on his brother pack i swear this blunt is haunted is insane um and in this song there's also a lot of pop culture references um one piece is referenced halo is referenced halo is referenced multiple times throughout the this album um and especially with the cover art um with the skulls on the top like how there's skulls in halo you can turn them on make it harder whatever else um uh and god of war is also referenced um and the verses on this one in my opinion are are definitely better than the first one but there's something about the the um the vibe of the first one that I just seem to like better. Um, I think I think it's mostly the mixing. If I had to put my like my finger on the exact um, on the exact difference that I really liked, the mixing of the first one just felt a lot 
angrier and more chaotic. And this one felt, I think it's, I mean, it's honestly better produced, but I think it just, it, I just didn't, it didn't hit me in the same way. I feel like most people, if they listen to both, would prefer this one over the last one. But I just prefer the original more. And that could be a nostalgia pick. Um, that could be it could be my bias just because I personally really like Dead by Default. I've been listening to it for years speaking, but I do prefer the original. But this song is still very good. The second song on the album is Bleed Much. Um I the the hook uh of this one is a lot angrier, and I just kind of I really like fuck with it right off rip. And I even wrote on my notes that's more fitting of the vibe that I want when I'm that I appreciate whenever I'm a part or I'm listening to a violent Kez project. It just fits more of what I really like about it. Um, and I also love this part right here. I didn't shoot, I don't think. Cruise in the pink, cruise and hop out. We can do it in the street. Moving on me, you finna be a dead man walking. You think they do is like. Um, and overall, it's just, it's, it's a good song. Um, it's not, it's not, it's definitely not top five on the album for me, but it's definitely up there. I, I enjoy it. And just moving on right to the next one with LGBTQ plus AR-15, which is a fucking hilarious name. I love the name of it. Um, and I also love the beat of this one. It's very simple. There's not too much going on, but it's harsh. And that's kind of the, the beats that I like whenever I get Kez in this state is those that are very like simple there's not too many layers to it but it's very aggressive very violent very harsh very intense those are the type of beats that i like here I, the flow on this one i mean they are just sliding on it like it's it's nuts um and obviously with the title you can tell that there's probably quite a few bars that reference uh lgbtq um you know issues or whatever else or just LGBTQ bars in general. I love those. Um, it feels very much like a continuation or a reference or whatever else. Very similar to Bye Boy from Dead by Default, which is, I, I love that song so much. So I also enjoy this one. And then we have um, we have Spartan Mode, uh, which uh, they actually released before this album was put out. I actually have an entire reaction on my channel. Right up. Oh, no. Ooh. I have an entire reaction on my channel. It should be like right up there, like higher. Sorry, it's revert, whatever. Um, so just if you want to hear my more in-depth thoughts on that one, go do that because I'm not about to repeat myself. You know what I'm saying? If you want to hear my thoughts on Spartan Mode, you best go find them yourself by going there now and then coming right back here. I'll give you a minute. All right, everybody's back. Perfect, love that. And next we're going to go into Flood. And this song, bro. As soon as it opens, you get the fucking AI Joe Biden voice. On oh God, I smoke that double-decker demonic disaster double-barrel yeah. blunt wrap yeah. with cake sprinkles in my Gucci bag. Fucking hilarious. I I think it's absolutely hilarious. Um, the hook uh, on this uh, is just wavy as shit. I love that. Um, I love the Halo continuation. Obviously, Spartan mode is very Halo reference, being Spartans, and the Flood is a villain. In the Halo universe where they take over dead. It's basically a hive mind that, that takes over dead bodies. Um, and so I love the 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 more explicit or more direct Halo references. Rather than just a couple bars here or there. Um, and one of my favorite bars I just love is. Love the water dripping off my neck. I guess I really am the flood. I mean mine's a little small. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's thin. But like. It's just a water though. Then going off of flood. Um, the next song on the listing is Primordial Rage, which is such an apt name because immediately from the first vocal notes we get from Kez, you tell that there is a literal insane amount of anger and rage contained in every single lyric. Um, it's just absolutely crazy. And then after that like really angry hook, um, you just have some of honestly like the, the best flow uh, on the album in my opinion um it's just very angry very emotional very intense and kez uh 
dives into some real life events uh, that happened to them instead of more so just references to pop culture, interesting bars. Um, and it's honestly infectious. The anger and the emotion and the intensity is so infectious that it, it makes me want to go slide on somebody's grandma and just rob them. For what? Do I need the money? No. I'm just there for the violence. That's what you have to understand. That's what it, how it makes you feel because it's just so infectious. And right after that, and completely fitting, is For the Horsemen. So obviously there's a reference to the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, um, which is essentially what happens when the world is ending <laughs> um, in Christian uh, in Christian belief. And um, I, like just listening to this, there's not a lot to this song, right? It's pretty much the same stanza over and over and over again. But I actually really enjoy it. And I think that a, a, a high-budget music video for this song would go absolutely stupid. Like... You just you just need a budget for it, and obviously it's just not at all worth it. But just thinking about it is cool because I just think that with like that budget, it could just be absolutely insane. After that is the song "Radioactive," which is very different from the other songs that came before. The other songs that came before are more what Violent Kez is about—just aggression, yelling, emotion, intensity. It's a little bit of a, a change up. There's, it's a little saucier than the really angry stuff. And one of my favorite lyrics and just parts of the song is uh, right here. And then one of my favorite lyrics uh, later in the song is, It's strange my wand all in her eyes and she don't want her vision back. Like Wanda Vision and then Doctor Strange in the beginning. Cause, so. My wand all in her eyes. She don't want her vision back. Crazy. Crazy. And the chorus of Radioactive is stupid. It's just stupid. After that is Fuck Trump 3. Um, and with this one, I have a bit of an interesting opinion on it. Because I was, I'm actually a very big fan of the first ever Fuck Trump. I don't even know what project that's on. I don't remember the name. But it's, it's decently far back. Um, and I like the chorus of the original fuck trump better but the verses on this fuck trump are better like uh, one of the lyrics says it looks like i gotta get arrested just to kill me a president because obviously trump got it right yeah uh and then at the end there's ai joe biden saying goodbye to america which is just hilarious and i think that like a a mashup of the original chorus with the verses of this to the kind of the mixing of the original one would just go crazy. Would just go crazy. The next one after that is DBK. It's more of a self-titled song. It obviously stands for Dead Boy Kez. Uh, and the start of it is just ignorant as fuck. That's what I wrote on my thing. It's just ignorant. Um, one of my favorite lyrics is, How you homophobic but your Brody isn't straight had your mans all up on my table shaking ass and spreading legs just so ignorant right like um and then the the melodic flow switch is also crazy i just love dbk it's one of my favorites on the album um and i just love it honestly from start to end all the different parts the next one after that is carmella 2 which is interesting because I was never the biggest fan of the first Carmella. Uh, but I do love the singing that happens in this one. Um, and the singing at the end is my favorite part of the song. But I didn't... The first Carmella is not my favorite on Dead by Default. And the second Carmella is kind of the same on, um, on this project. It's just not my favorite. Then we go to Op after that, which is one of my favorites. And the beginning of it is just stupid hard. And the middle singing is stupid, too. Um, I don't really have much else to say. I don't have too much to say on any one of these songs because there's 18 of them. You know, I don't want the review to, to go on forever. But, yeah. After that is Apex Legend, which is definitely top five for me on the project. 
Uh, there's a lot of pop culture references in this one, even the the title Apex Legends, like the game. Um, so obviously, there's a lot of pop culture references in there. The beginning is stupid, honestly. Kez opens all of these songs really well. Like I don't even think there's one of them where it's like the hook doesn't entice you into listening to more, which is important because that's how you get people to come in and listen through the song. And the beginning needs to be good, or I'm gonna skip it before I can even get to the verses. Um, this right here is one of my favorite parts. I just love the tonal delivery of this one. Since I write my name again, I'll probably put a chop out. I'ma walk up in this bitch with hella sticks and let them dogs out. This little number finna pound a bitch and X is telly crossed out. Watch me drop my fucking rifle, one hit kill like I'm the op now. What? And then one of my favorite lyrics in this is, She dropped the box on me like top downs, bro. I just... Some of the, the lyrics on this project are just insane, and I just think it's hilarious. Then we have Hello 2, um, which, I mean, uh, again, top five. The whole first half of the song, some of the just stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. And that's not like a negative thing. Like, it just goes stupid. Um, and then there's a lot of One Piece references, which makes me a little sad because the original Hello had a uh, peso on it, and this one doesn't. I don't know why. Uh, I know that Kez doesn't really have features on this project at all except on pop in and cart night at the end so it's you know there's not really a ton of features but definitely miss peso on this not to say that kez can't do it uh, on their own but you know miss the kez and peso connection uh, my favorite lyric which I, i'll also play but i'm gonna read it it says your bitch a blade a beyblade she gon she gonna go spin on this dick when i pull out the rip stick insane i don't think i've ever heard a beyblade bar in any song that was actually creative and hilarious i uh, just just stupid um <laughs> and i said the second half melodic part is unexpected but i i, I think i was I was either tired or something else whenever I wrote the script for this because I said this shit was slidey as fuck. What is slidey? I don't think that's a real word, but I kind of like it. Like, yo, that second part was slidey. I don't know. Maybe I'll start saying it. Who knows? Who knows? The next song is the first features beginning there with Pop In featuring Shofu and Jeesh. Jeesh. Um, the beginning is hard as always. But I said, but I, I, this is exactly what I wrote. If you just want to know how I my brain works, I said beginning hard as always, but this shit slidey hard. What does that mean? What does slidey hard mean? Who knows? I don't know, man. I, yeah, um, this part right here where he goes ming ming ming. I I love that part. I just I love onomatopoeia in my rap songs. Um, my favorite lyric is they say I don't watch dogs, but I see how they network. Like I don't. I don't watch dogs as in people like, oh, that's a dog. Like, I don't watch dogs, but I see how they network. But also the game watch dogs, which involves hacking into the network to make things happen. Crazy. Another pop culture reference. Absolutely crazy. And I said, Shofu slides in, slidey as fuck. I mean, Shofu always goes stupid, though. Like, I cannot remember the last time I heard a verse, either feature or his own song from Shofu that wasn't just dummy. Um... And then Jeesh comes in hard, has a good verse, but I think that Kez and Shofu just were so slidey <laughs> that it, Jeesh is the worst of the three. That's not to say that Jeesh is not good at making music or even that Jeesh's verse was not good, but the other two were so good that it puts it in the context, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> so the next one on the track list is I Love Trans Girls, which has been out for a minute and i'm not gonna play any clips from this because i don't think i can but absolutely love everything about the song love the name love the message love the lyrics um and i saw in the thing that it was like twenty six thousand listens six thousand of those are probably me i love this song so much i think it's hilarious and yeah that's really all i have to say about that one the next the second to last the penultimate right the penultimate song on this project is dead slash them, which is um, referring to Kez coming out as non-binary uh, using they, them pronouns. Uh, and we respect that on this channel. Um, it's the most harmonial song on the project so far. Um, 
and I mean, it's the the really the second song on this project that's like I would consider an LGBTQ song. We got we we gotta support that. Gotta support that. Um, even though Kez no longer identify identifies identifies as the bi boy on the block, as a bi boy myself, we still repping. We still repping. Um, I just also love the part <laughs> where it's just like. Um, the beats going off and Kez just like, bitch, I'm gay as fuck. <laughs> um, one of my favorite lyrics is if you don't believe in gay rights, you're just a fucking dork. Uh, and then later in the song, there's a knock. It, it scared the shit out of me every time, bro. It scares the shit out of me. And then right at the very end, at the very end, we got AI Joe Biden talking about killing the bull bitch. If you don't remember the killing the bull bitch here, let me play this real quick. Like Reese's Puffs. You know your ugly ass don't like no Reese's Puffs. You probably eat fucking kale in a bowl, bitch. <laughs> banger. Banger. I, only the real ones remember that Kez was the kale in the bowl, bitch. Um, originator. A great reference. And then Cart Night 4 is the last song on the project. And the Cart Night series, as AI Joe Biden explains in the beginning, um is essentially just supposed to be like Kez and friends just having a good time on the beat. Um, I hate that that has to be explained for people who may be like, well, this doesn't really make sense. Like on Dead by Default, Cart and I was there. It didn't really fit with the rest of the songs, but it was just like fun. It's fun music, whatever. I hate that has to be explained to people, but you know how people are. Um, and then honestly, this is going to sound crazy. This is going to sound crazy. Kez's part in this which is the very first verse you hear is one of my favorite verses i've ever heard from any artist ever that shit is so slidey it's crazy and then after that i don't know who this is but where you get the um this part right here like that I love that part. The rest of the song is okay. I'm not in love with the rest of the parts, but Kez's verse is just absolutely insane. And then I just love the this uh, that part right there. All right. So now that the lab analysis is done, we can just move on to the concluding thoughts. I'll just let Aaron go and handle that. Here you go, Aaron. Here's the mic. All right. Thanks, Aaron. So just a couple concluding thoughts after the review. Got to always love when Kez drops. It's so consistent, and it always seems to be what I need when I need it. Like, um, whenever I'm going through a breakup or something related to that, I get a Kez album or EP or whatever that relates just to what I'm feeling. And whenever I just need a little bit of energy, things are going well, whatever else, I get the violent drops or just when I need to be angry or whatever else. So it always seems like I get what I need when I need it, and it's super consistent, and you have to appreciate that. Also, I mean, obviously, as I mentioned throughout the uh, review, this album is full of pop culture references, which there's both good and bad to it. It's good because it shows that Kez has the ability to create interesting and timely lyrics um, that show creativity and skill in doing so. However, it also means that the album could be dated. Even the AI Joe Biden uh voices and skits before and after songs while i personally may enjoy them and find them funny that's already a dated meme and it's only been maybe three or four months since this album dropped but i don't think that's a huge issue because kez's release rate is so consistent that it doesn't really matter like they have released so much more music since this album has dropped that that doesn't really matter too much and to people like myself who have listened to it when it dropped, I haven't really lost the uh, appreciation or enjoyment of listening to it, even though some of the references or memes may be dated. Um, the one kind of like negative or nitpick I have about it is that the album felt a little bloated. 18 songs is a lot. And for some of them, I mean, the songs are pretty short, like one and a half two two and a half minutes it felt like we could have just got less songs with longer songs the ones that were still there and i think like some of them just really didn't need to be on the album 
So it just felt a little bloated, but it's not a huge issue because I can just listen around some of the songs that maybe aren't my favorites or I believe maybe don't need to exist for the cohesive project. It's not to say that any of the songs are bad. I think none of them are bad. But when you're looking at the project as a whole cohesive unit, some of them don't really make sense. But I still love all of the creative themes and concepts that Kez tends to run with, and I'm still very excited for what drops next. Thank you guys so much for listening to this point. If you could please subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and leave a comment on anything else you want me to review or talk about, that'd be really cool. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.